This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gesine. Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Translated by F. P. Walter. Second Part. Chapter Twenty Three. Conclusion. We come to the conclusion of this voyage under the seas. What happened that night? How the skiff escaped from the maelstrom's fearsome eddies? How Ned Land, Conseil, and I got out of that whirlpool? I am unable to say. But when I regained consciousness, I was lying in a fisherman's hut on one of the Lofoten Islands. My two companions, safe and sound, were at my bedside, clasping my hands. We embraced each other heartily. Just now we can't even dream of returning to France. Travel between Upper Norway and the South is limited. So I have to wait for the arrival of a steamboat that provides by monthly service from North Cape. So it is here, among these gallant people who have taken us in, that I am reviewing my narrative of these adventures. It is accurate. Not a fact has been omitted, not a detail has been exaggerated. It's the faithful record of this inconceivable expedition into an element now beyond human reach, but where progress will some day make great inroads. Will anyone believe me? I don't know. Ultimately, it's unimportant. What I can now assert is that I've earned the right to speak of these seas, beneath which, in less than ten months, I have cleared twenty thousand leagues in this underwater tour of the world that has shown me so many wonders across the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic, the southernmost and northernmost seas. But what happened to the Nautilus? Did it withstand the Maelstrom's clutches? Is Captain Nemo alive? Is he still under the ocean, pursuing his frightful program of revenge? Or did he stop after that latest mass execution? Will the waves some day deliver the manuscript that contains his full life story? Will I finally learn the man's name? Will the nationality of the stricken warship tell us the nationality of Captain Nemo? I hope so. I likewise hope that his powerful submersible has defeated the sea inside its most dreadful whirlpool, that the Nautilus has survived where so many ships have perished. If this is the case, and Captain Nemo still inhabits the ocean, his adopted country, may the hate be appeased in that fierce heart. May the contemplation of so many wonders extinguish the spirit of vengeance in him. May the executioner pass away, and the scientist continue his peaceful exploration of the seas. If his destiny is strange, it's also sublime. Haven't I encompassed it myself? Didn't I lead ten months of this otherworldly existence? Thus to that question asked six thousand years ago in the book of Ecclesiastes, Who can fathom the soundless depths? Two men out of all humanity have now earned the right to reply, Captain Nemo and I. End of the second part and end of Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne Translated by F. P. Walter Recorded by Gesine in Valletta May 2006